What is up, guys? How you doing? It's James here from J Ray Games, and I'm back again with another video tutorial to show you how to get the most out of your PSVR with your PC. And I am very excited today. I'm very excited. I have got an option for positional tracking that I think is going to appeal to a lot of people. Um, I hope that uh, you guys get to try this out. I honestly, I think that this is a fantastic way to use your PSVR, to get positional tracking, to have fun with your games. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss this one. Okay guys, today we are talking about positional tracking and I feel like we've had this conversation many times before. We've looked at all sorts of different positional tracking options. We've looked at Nolo VR, which is a fantastic option. Uh, we've looked at PS Move Service uh, using the PS Move controllers. We've looked at the Trinus uh, built-in webcam option. All of these work. Some work better than others. Some are easier to set up than others. Today, I'm going to show you an option that has been around for a while, um, and now I'm going to be able to show you how to set it up for the PSVR. Funny enough that it is a Microsoft product that gives us this amazing tracking option. This is the Xbox 360 Connect, if you didn't already know. This will also work with the Xbox One Connect, but we have to wire it uh, a little bit differently, and it is a pain in the ass, so... Um, I'm going with the 360 option. It is the easiest. And I'm going to show you just how easy this is to get your tracking working with your PSVR on the PC. Now, I will admit there is some software that you're going to have to purchase. We'll talk about that as well. However, it's a small price to pay for a really, really solid tracking solution. These things are super cheap. If you can pick up one of these, you're going to find them for really, really cheap. And because the cameras in here, everything is built at a known distance, we're not doing crazy calibrations. Uh, we're not hanging or anchoring any cameras. All we're doing is positioning the connect where it, uh, it can see us, and it's going to do the rest. All right, so stay tuned. I'm going to show you how that works. All right, in order for this to work, we're going to be using a piece of software called Driver4VR. Um, this is their website here, driver4vr.com. And I will put the link in the description below. Um, Greg, the guy who works on this, is fantastic. He is constantly improving it. He's constantly working with the people using it, trying to make it better. And um, it seems that with every update, it gets better and better and better. When we ask for, you know, when we suggest revisions or updates he works on it and he comes up with great solutions this is going to cost you 20 euros 20 euros so wherever you are in your country um you just do the euro conversion you'll figure out what that is for me it was about um, 25 bucks which is a small price to pay when you consider that the average game is going to cost you more than that and this is going to work for everything it's going to work for all games, and it's going to simplify your life a lot, I promise. All right, so that is, um, that is what you're going to need to get started with this. And before we go any further at all, um, I don't want this video to be super long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into several parts. This being the first part, we're going to focus on just getting it set up, making sure it's tracking properly, making sure we've got positional tracking happening, and then we're going to look at ways that we can add on to it and make it even better. All right, before you go any further, after you've already tried this, and I believe there is a trial for it if you want to just see how it works, um, after that we're going to need to download the Connect for Windows SDK. All right, this is important. You need it on the computer in order to be able to work with and to connect to the Connect. Uh, it needs the SDK installed for Windows in order for that to happen. Otherwise, it will not be recognized as a device. It needs to have this installed first. You will get that warning with Driver 4 VR if you do not have it installed. All right, once you've got all that, 
Um, it will ask you uh, where your Steam folder is. It's going to install to the Steam folder. It's going to get everything set up properly the way that it needs to, and then we're going to be able to actually play with it. Okay, here's a look at the uh, Xbox Connect once it's set up. I have it on a little uh, table here. Uh, kind of a lame ghetto setup, but uh, once you've got it connected correctly, you will see the green light flashing. I've got my Nolo sitting on top there. We'll talk about that in a later video. But uh, it's very important. One thing I forgot to mention is that you want to make sure you have the charging cable. Um, some of them come with it, some don't. It's very important that you have that because it will come with the USB connector and the power cord. Um, you need that USB connection to your computer. Um, so I have, the, like I said, the charging cord is very, very important. Now, if you look at the distance between there to where I am playing, we're looking at approximately seven or eight feet between the play area and where the Kinect is sitting. Okay, now that the Kinect is set up in the correct position and we uh, pretty much have the hardware end of things set up, we can go ahead and install the um, driver for VR if we haven't done so already. It is going to look for the Kinect, uh, it should find it, and uh, then it'll allow us to actually play with it. Now there's not much that we have to worry about as far as setup goes because it'll put all the drivers that it needs inside of the Steam folder for us. So now what we can do is we can simply go and turn on Trinus as we normally would. And we'll just wait for that to load up. There we go. Now we're not going to use NOLA. We're not going to use anything advanced here at all. Uh, even my height and forward should be just set to zero, but it's probably not going to affect anything at all. Um, and I also want to make sure I don't already have VR running. I don't. So I'm going to start it up as I normally would. And we're going to see it calibrate. And I'm going to launch Steam next. Again, when you see the screen blackout, it's because I'm in admin mode. Just take a second to come back. Here we go. Steam is loading up. Away it goes. And like I said, because we're going to do this in, in, in multiple parts, the first part here will be just to show you how it looks once it's working correctly. All right, so that you guys can see how this works. All right, here comes Steam. Let me just move this window. Okay. Nice. And finally, we're going to do our Steam VR. And you're going to see a new window that pops up now, which is Driver for VR, which will come up as Steam VR loads. Here we go. Steam VR is loading up. There it is. And I'm going to do my good old trick, Alt Tab, select the headset window, shift Windows right, send it to the PSVR. And now you're going to see this window that comes up. This is your driver for VR control panel. And currently I have it set up how I was using it, but what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to just set everything to the connect skeleton and basically that means that the connect is going to detect all movements of me using the headset based on the skeleton that it uh, it has all right and I'll show you what that means in a second and we can click start driver for VR and we're going to see that the frames per second for the connect come up I believe the maximum is 30 frames per second but you'll also see the driver for VR FPS is running at about 60, so that's good. And it's saying that both are good. Now, the real magic with this software is uh, inside here with the Connect settings. If we click that, you're going to see a pink, not pink, I guess it's a purple screen that shows us right now what the Connect camera sees. All right, I'm just going to pause the video for a second. I'm going to rotate it so you can see my play place, play space, and watch what happens when I enter the purple area that the Kinect sees. Okay, so here I am in the area that the Kinect sees. It's in front of me. And as you can see, there's a skeleton that is being recorded of me 
while I am inside this space. And as I move my hands and my legs and all my parts of my body, the skeleton will match the movements that I am making within that space. And this is where the magic of using the Kinect comes in. Because it doesn't just track your head or your hands, it tracks your entire body. And this creates a lot of potential for future uses that you're going to see again in upcoming videos. Now that we know that this is tracking properly, we can go and use the Kinect to track our movements. Now keep in mind that we are not using any other cameras. We are simply using the Kinect camera and that is it. There's no other devices other than the PSVR that I'm going to put on my head. And watch how it translates what the Kinect sees with what I am seeing in VR. I'm going to just turn on the mirror so you guys can see exactly what I see while I'm in that VR space. And it's going to be pretty shocking, at least it was for me the first time I played with this. Let me rotate my camera again to show you my movements and watch what you see in the mirror. Okay, I'm going to head on over. And as soon as I walk over, you should see the room show up now on the screen because it has detected that I am within the play area. Now once I put the headset on, you will see that my hands are the controllers. All right, my hands have become the Vive controllers. And now when I move, you are seeing that everything is tracking positionally just off of the Kinect camera alone. All right, nothing else is driving this other than the 360 Kinect camera. And it's working fantastic. I can use my head to control the laser of the controllers, but the problem is I have no way of clicking the buttons. All right, I can't access the controllers, I can't use the controllers in any ways, and that's where I'm going to need some other device in order to select menu options and to have full control over this. But this is as far as I want to get with this video. It's amazing when you look at this at how well it tracks and how well it moves with me and how those hands track beautifully and I'm able to get this nice positional tracking moving forward, moving back, left and right, up and down all off of one camera, off of one device and like I said you can pick up a Kinect 360 camera super cheap um, because nobody's using them anymore all right, guys, well, hopefully you found that useful. This is the first part, like I said. Next, we're going to look at actually hooking up controllers and a few different options with that. Just so you know, the fantastic people over at NOLO have decided to give us, this channel and its subscribers, a 5% discount on their NOLO CV1 tracking uh, hardware. And the link is going to be in the description below. Stay tuned for more. I'm going to have another part to this where we can see how we can actually implement this. For now, get it working to this point. I will have part two coming very shortly. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.